Okay. So the theory is with the ballpoint pen that you're going to start with a lighter color and use the lighter color as your pencil, okay? So you will use it to lay out the picture first and then you go into it with the next darkest color and then the next darkest color to add your progressively darkening value just like when you would regularly draw. But instead of changing pencils like going from a 2H to a 2B to a 6B, we're gonna go from a pink to a red to a purple to a blue because it'll change in tone. That's what I did here. This one I just went through blues and I started with the light blue and then I went purple, then dark blue, then black. It's your choice which one you start to practice with. Practice with something you feel like you might want to use on your final. That would be useful for you. If you feel uncomfortable choosing your own colors, just do the same ones that I'm doing and that's fine too, all right? So what we're gonna start with is, I'm gonna start, do this one with green because I haven't done green before and it seems nice to have lots of practices. So I'm gonna start this with this nice light green. Don't start with, did you go, oh no, the dark green didn't come in. So there's no worries about that. So I'm gonna start with the light green. If you're starting with blue, start with this blue. If you're starting with, if you wanna do the red tones, start with the pink. The purple's really too dark to be a starter color, okay? And if you're not sure what color it's gonna be and what color's darker, test it out. This is a practice. You can make little marks on the side of it to see. You can see how I did that up here earlier today to test and see what that color should go next, okay? So what we're gonna do first with your lightest color is to draw lightly, pushing light, the circle. Just like you kind of would with pencil, in the same way, pushing lightly, you're just going to use that lightest color to draw the circle and the shadow. So it looks like this, just so that you can see it a little bit darker, right? Just in case you're having a hard time seeing it on the book page, which can be kind of difficult, which is good and bad, because if you're having a hard time seeing it, that means that the sketch isn't gonna stay, right? It's not gonna be visible bigger. Bigger things, yes. Big spheres, not so big that they fall off the page, but, but big so that they take up space and will really get the good practice. Don't draw something teeny weeny. It's hard to add detail to teeny weeny things and get them looking right. Lots of big, sketchy lines, really loose. Okay, so now I'm going to start to add the value on, and I'm going to be pushing lightly. When you add value with lines to a sphere to make it look three-dimensional, you will do the lines curving this way when they're on this side. Less curve here, straight in the center, curved here, curved this way here, like this, okay, but not exactly like that. We're not making oranges. That's just the path that I'm going to draw in. So before you start, watch me for a minute and then you can move on. So I've got my little example and I'm going to go around. I'm going to leave the highlight area kind of up here. And so I'm gonna go around like this, adding my values, not pushing hard, going all the way to the edge. Down here for the shadow, I will do it like this so that it will look flat like it's on a surface. Does that make sense? And then I'm gonna keep doing this with layers. So go ahead and start yours. Make sure you're asking questions and I will come around to check on them. a little highlight area where you're not putting any pen at all. Okay, 
covering and end up with kind of a decent coating. Now it's not going to be your last covering with this color, it's your kind of first covering. With the ballpoint pen, the layering, you do several layers and finish with um, the light color again, kind of like we do with colored pencil. It's really, really simple. So now we need to move to the next darkest color. And with this, I'm going to go through kind of blue tones, and I believe that this is going to be the next darkest color. But don't just take my word for it. You try it out and see which one you think is the next darkest color. I'm going to go through the blues and then maybe be using the black too. Okay? So when you get your next darkest color, you do the same thing that you just did with the lightest color, but you don't go all the way into the area where you put. Here, look at this finished one. You see how there's lots of light blue in the middle here? And then the darker blue only goes in a little ways? That's what you're gonna do. Go in kind of far, but blend it out. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm leaving some area where it's just the book page and some area where it is just the green and then some area where it's green and blue. Remember that spheres, when they're on surfaces, they have reflected light areas which are underneath the spheres. So the light, the green will go all the way down and then the blue won't go quite all the way down to where the sphere is touching the table, the imaginary table, right? And then get into the shadow and the same thing. The blue will go through the shadow or your next lightest color goes through the shadow and then it fades out into the green. But it scoots right up close next to the sphere and you're just using really light pressure, guys, because you're trying to hide your stroke lines. And you do that by layering the tones on top of each other.
Hold it there. So next, I'm going to move to the dark blue. I'm going to move to the dark blue. And the dark blue is going to go less over than the light blue did. So it's going to go right on top of the green and the light blue. And it's just going to become the core of the shadow. And then I will use lighter pen pressure as I try to get it to blend into the light areas. Sometimes I need to turn my paper so that the lines look better, and that's fine. So I'm gonna do a really light kind of ring up at the top. shadow that's on the table. Again, I'm going to make sure that right up next to the sphere, it's very dark and it's solid. And as it extends away, it gets lighter. to go back to it with the light green and I'm going to fill in some of the gaps with light green it's almost like that light tone kind of blends it pencil or colored pencil when you keep layering the more you layer the more it will blend and then eventually it starts ripping your paper so we are learning this very delicate balance here and I just think that it's so cool how it layers and how well it layers. Okay. I'm even going to try the black on this one. So I'll be really careful with it and not use a lot, but I do want the darkest part of the shadow to be right up close to the reflected light have it just come out a little bit. That just changed the tone just a little bit. And then 
right through the core of the shadow in the middle of the sphere. I'm going to do a little black in there too. And I made my reflected light too big, so I'm going to go in with my blue and make it a little bit smaller. The reflected light really isn't that big. It's a pretty slim thing. Usually, unless the surface is very, very, very shiny, or the sphere is very, very, very shiny, it's not usually that big. Mm, it's a little jelly bean shaped, but you know, I like him anyway. 